Get the worksheet used in this lesson, as well as hundreds of others, at mathcation.com. This video is about parallel lines cut by a transversal. We're going to go through some problems that you can find on our practice worksheet on our website. Let's jump down to number one. The first thing we need to go over are the parts of the parallel lines cut by a transversal. These two lines here are parallel lines. And parallel lines are lines that will never cross. Think of them as railroad tracks or the outside parts of a ladder. So they'll never cross. Then the line that does cross them is called the transversal, which is this part right here. So when we talk about or when I say parallel lines, we're talking about these lines here, and then the line that goes across the parallel lines is the transversal. Now, when you're solving for angles that are missing in parallel lines cut by a transversal, there are a few key things that you need to remember. The easiest two things to remember are vertical angles and corresponding angles. Now, vertical angles are any angles that are diagonal across the parallel line in the transversal. In the case of this problem, 60 and x are vertical angles. Now, 60 and x are vertical angles, and all vertical angles are congruent. So I automatically know that if this is 60, and because this is diagonal across from it, it also has to be 60. If we knew this angle here, let's just call it question mark, then the angle across from it here would also be question mark. They would be exactly the same. Moving on to find y uses the second most important thing to remember when doing parallel lines cut by a transversal, and that's called corresponding angles. Now, a corresponding angle is located in the same position at each of the intersections of the transversal. So if you look and you notice that the transversal creates four angles each time it crosses a parallel line. So we'll do one, two, three, four. And it also occurs down here, one, two, three, four. Now each of these angles corresponds with the other angle of the same number. So angle one here will be equal to angle one. Angle two will be equal to angle two, three and three, four and four. Now in the case of this x here, this x is located at angle three, which means that angle three down here will also be identical or congruent to the, whatever angle is here. Now in the case of x, x is 60 and because it corresponds to y, that means that y also has to be 60 degrees. If you found this video helpful, make sure you drop a like, subscribe to our channel, or check out our website for more premium math content. Thanks for watching.